crazy time. Just want to make every effort really to connect um, connect with you, and uh, so we're doing these live. So this is, I uh, have a couple little things, and then we're going to jump into just a real quick message recap. And one of the reasons we're doing the message recap is uh, really to kind of give you a boost during the week, kind of midweek, remind you. Uh, hopefully you you were online with us or, or you've gone on YouTube, listened to the message. Hopefully it inspired and encouraged you. And so now midweek, we kind of want to give you that booster shot again to remind you of maybe what God spoke to you because there's you know bad news every day. Um, and so just want to keep you encouraged. And so I want to share a couple of things while everyone's coming online. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll jump and do a real quick uh, message uh, recap. But one of the things I want to share, I was thinking today um, as I was praying and really praying for you. And I'm really so proud of our church during this time. I'm so proud of our staff because they have adapted so well. Because essentially we're still doing all the same ministry um, that we've really always done. It's just, it looks a lot different. And so we're still doing children's ministry and student ministry and women's ministry. I mean, we're all, all of these things are still, we're still doing outreach and still, still supporting ministries, uh, in our city and, and ultimately around the world. And so, um, it just looks a little different and I kind of like the challenge and we've just got an incredible team an incredible church who has stood with us. Thank you for giving faithfully. Thank you for praying. Thank you for calling and asking what you can do and, um, for being connected. And, and I just think connection and engagement is the key. And so hopefully you're staying connected with your life groups. If you're not in a life group, please contact us. We would love to get you connected to a life group during this time. They're still meeting, but it looks different. It looks virtual um, through Zoom. Um, you know, students are meeting tonight. They're doing crew night. They're doing that through Zoom calls and those type of things. And that's video chat, essentially, where you can chat with lots of people at the same time. But So lots is going on. And it's crazy, crazy world. Um, <clears throat> but I was thinking today, I love Psalm 18. And Psalm 18 is just, it's a psalm of deliverance um, from when David was really delivered finally by the hand of God from King Saul, who was really trying to, to, to kill him, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, it says this, says verse 1, and I'm just going to read a couple verses, but it says, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. Catch that. O oh Lord, my strength. Who is his strength, right? The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, and he says it again, my strength in whom I trust. Notice he's trusting God's strength and not his strength. And he said, my shield and the horn of my, the horn of my salvation and my stronghold. And then he says this, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and so shall I be saved from my enemies. And I just want to encourage you during this time that God's your strength. You don't have to be your strength and um, you don't have to be your source. And I would just ask you this question today in all the, in all the crazy and all the uh, crisis and everything, whose strength are you trusting in? Are you trusting in your strength? Because your strength is exhaustible. Your strength has limits. Um, but God is an exa inexhaustible source. He was without limits and so today, I just want to encourage you, trust in His strength today, whatever that looks like. Just think about what that looks like as you're maybe homeschooling the kids, uh, maybe you're still going to the office and working, um, whatever that looks like in your life. What does it look like today to make God your strength and not you your strength and to trust in His strength and let Him deliver you um, from, from your enemies? So... Um, anyway, just was thinking about you, praying about you. That was a scripture I felt like God put in my heart and wanted to share it with you. Um, a couple of things really quick also is that uh, this weekend we're really excited about um, this weekend online. Hopefully, I uh, want to encourage you maybe do a, a watch party on Facebook if you watch through Facebook. Uh, this weekend, I think the 9 a.m. will even be on YouTube. Um, so you can watch there as well. Uh, so lots of ways to connect, but we really want you to connect, do a watch party, have a neighbor over, have a friend over if you feel safe and comfortable to do that. And, and, don't, and, and here's the big thing about church online, don't, um, don't spectate, participate. Don't spectate, participate. You, you will get out of it as much as you put into it. God's presence is still without bounds and limits, and He is not limited by geographical location. So he will meet with you where you're at if you will engage the presence of God with us, even though 
uh, we're online. And so I just want to encourage you. Also, I know yesterday uh, Mayor Andy Mack um, indicated that, that if there's more cases of corona in Gregg County, he may close Longview. Um, we don't know what that looks like, but here's what we did. We got together with our team and made a contingency plan that goes all the way through Easter. We will have church online until we can have it in person. It may change how it looks just a little bit, but we will keep to all of our same service times, all of our experience times. Uh, we will continue. We've got an incredible Passion Week 2020 planned uh, from, from Palm Sunday through Easter. Most of that is online content. Um, and there again, if we're able to come out by then, then that'd be awesome. But, um, but we have, I just want you to rest assured we will be here. Uh, we will be engaging. We will be encouraging. We will be ministering. And so I just encourage you, send these links to your friends. Uh, we'll be doing content throughout the, throughout the week, but especially that Passion Week. We have some devos and some prayer times and some worship times uh, lined up as well as our uh, Easter weekend. And no matter, even if, we're on, even if everything's shut down, we have a plan for all of it. So I just want you to know we'll be here uh, regardless of, of what happens. All right, I want to jump into the message recap just really quickly. And what we talked about, and this is, this to me was, um, I, I love tensions. And, and I love kind of when things flip around just a little bit. And, and, and I like, because we were in Mark 4, when the disciples go into the storm, Jesus, Jesus says, let's cross over to the other side. They start to cross over the Sea of Galilee. They encounter a storm. They're convinced they're going to die. Um, they, and Jesus is asleep on a cushion. Um, and they wake him up, and then he calms the storm. Like, we all love this text, especially in times like these. Like These are incredible um, moments that we see in the Bible with people in storms and those type of things. Um, and so I, I just I pulled some points really quickly, and, and, and the, the context was this. That in Mark 4, I don't think the problem is that the disciples encountered a storm. I think the problem is that they let the storm inside of them. I don't think the problem is, is that they went into a storm. I think the problem is they let the storm into them. And, and so I wanted to talk about that because that would be really easy to do in, in a time like this. And so three signs that, that the storm, you've let the storm inside of you. Um, the, the, the first one I said this, and this is true. If you got more than a month's worth of TP, you have let the storm inside of you. Okay. You have, you just, because listen, you don't need that much toilet paper. You don't. And that's, I'm telling you what, I think it's sin. But anyways, uh, three signs for real, three signs that you let the storm inside of you. Um, number one is, and it all comes from verse 38 where they're shouting. It literally says the disciples woke Jesus up shouting they said, don't you care? We're all going to die, essentially. And so to me, that's three things. If, you, if the storm's inside of you, number one, you're angry at God. That's what we talked about. Uh, and most of the time we get angry with God when we're scared. Or we get angry. And, and here's what I would say is that most of the time our, our anger with God is based on perception. And let me just show you what I mean really quickly. Like right now I'm on your screen and you can see me and you can hear me, Right. Um, and so many times, this is how we want to relate to God. We want to have Him in focus. We want to see Him. We want to hear Him. And, and if I were to get up and just move over here, now you can't see me at all. I'm no longer in the frame, but I'm still here. And sometimes that's how it is with God, that because we can't see Him, we assume He's not there, we get scared. Because He doesn't do things the way that, that he, you know, we, we hope He would do things, then, then we get um, scared. And so I, I just... You know, if you're angry with God, there could be, uh, most of the time, the anger is a result of a judgment based on God's performance that is based on your limited understanding. So it's your limited understanding makes a judgment against the all-knowing, all-powerful God's performance, and you end up angry. The second thing, and this is, the, to me, the, the one I really felt strongly I wanted to talk about today, is you don't feel like God cares. Um, and, and, you know, right now we're, we're all going through a lot and you may have lost your job. Um, you, your pay may have been decreased. I mean, these are all things impacting us as well. Um, and so I understand how those can feel. Um, and you may think, well, God just doesn't care about me and God doesn't see me. I, I just want to remind you that, you know, I love what Jesus says, his eyes on the sparrow. You remember that song, his eyes on the sparrow. And Jesus talks about how he closed the lilies of the valley and, and they were dressed better than King Solomon, who's like the wealthiest guy ever. 
Um, and so how much more is God going to take care of you? And how much more is God watching you? And I love what Peter said. First Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Um, and I like that because it, it talks about our care and His care. And our care, that word actually in the original language would be our fear or anxiety. So he's saying, cast, cast what's worrying you on Him, for He cares. And that word means to look upon and to focus, to give attention to with compassion or with concern. So God is watching you with compassion or with concern. And he's saying, hey, would, would you give me your fear? Right? Um, and, and I just think about sometimes we are so much better at keeping our cares than casting our cares. We're so much better at keeping our cares than casting our cares. I just want to encourage you. God loves you. Will you cast your care? Uh, the, second, the third one is you believe this is the end. And what we said is when your God's name is resurrection, even the end isn't the end. So let me give you four things really quickly um, to keep the storm outside of you. Number one, we said keep Jesus in, in your boat. They took Jesus with them. Hey, make sure Jesus stays in your boat. Number two, we said believe the word of God. Believe the word of God. And what we said is God said to them, Jesus said, let's go over to the other side. So the word of God, the promise of God was not, let's go into the middle and die. And right now, I just want you to know the promise of God, the word of God, I feel this so strongly for, for everyone is, this isn't the end of anything. This is a season. This is a time. And I've got some incredible things, I, I feel like, some insight to share this weekend with you in our worship experiences. I hope you'll tune in because I think it will, it will give some context, I think, um, spiritually to some of the things we're walking through. But we're just walking through it. This isn't the end. And so we need to, if they would have really believed the Word of God, if they'd believed the Word of God, they would encounter the storm and say, wait a second, Jesus said we're going to the other side. He didn't say we're going to go to the middle and drown. And so you're not going to go to the middle and drown. No matter what, let me tell you, no matter what it looks like today, you're not going to go to the middle and drown. You're going to go to the other side. I think, though, this is, this is the key difference here in believing the Word of God. David said, your word I've hidden in my heart. Let me ask you this. Are you in the Word or is the Word in you? Because those aren't the same thing. Because you can be in the Word and the Word not be in you. And so I want to encourage you to get the Word of God in you, to put it in inside of you to believe it to trust it not just read your devotional plan not just read your verse of the day however you do that but get the word of god inside of you don't just get in the word get the word of god inside of you believe the word of god and then we talked about this a lot last week but choosing faith over fear and i think it is our our choice i think we both of them are an assessment we said both faith and fear are an assessment of power and a belief they're in so you look at the situation and you say that's powerful and i believe in it and that could be a negative or you can look at God and say, He is powerful, I believe in Him, and that could be a positive. That's choosing faith over fear. This is a time to keep choosing faith over fear. We get that opportunity every day. And I think it's given our faith a workout, which I think is a good thing. I actually think storms have a lot of potential, and I think it's a good thing. And then the last thing, we said this, you need to stay full because you're full of something. I mean, just, you can tell somebody, you can type it on the screen, hey, you're full of something. Right? We're all full of something. Um, but it says the boat was being filled with water and the disciples were being filled with the storm. And what they needed to do was be filled with the presence of God. Because the presence of God is love and joy and peace and long-suffering or, you know, or perseverance or patience, you could put. And so, um, and so I want to encourage you, take some time today and be filled with, with the presence of God. Be filled with something good. Um, I, I still love what uh, Pastor um, oh, Hope City, Foster, Jeremy Foster, what Pastor Jeremy Foster said, who's actually going to be with us this year at, at Unite at the Unite Conference in the fall. Um, but he actually said this. He said, he said right now believers are um, watching the news and checking the word. And he said, I think you need to do it the other way. I think you need to check the news, but watch the Word. You need to watch God. You need to be filled with God. Listen, don't let the storm inside of you. Keep it outside of you. I, I, I love you. I'm praying for you today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, we're going to keep doing these. I think it's a great way to recap. I think it's a great way to give us a boost. Also know church online can sometimes be distracting. If you have kids, dogs, all those things. 
And so this is a great way um, for us just to recap and keep faith alive in us and just keep the message and the Word of God in us. So love you today. Pray for your pathway. I can't wait to see you this weekend.